With today's advanced applications, we really need to have some some complex and advanced data flow control going beyond traditional firewalls, traditional IPS, and traditional proxies. So we're going to look at some advanced solutions here for DLP, which is data loss prevention, or you could say data leakage prevention as well. Let's take a look at this diagram for a second. Now this diagram is courtesy of the Center for Net Security, CIS. It comes from their 20 controls document. You've got to get a hold of that document. I'm going to give a shout out to them because it's a very important document. And this is one of the areas, one of the main controls that they're talking about. And I want you to notice at the bottom that we see some encryption systems. And these are some systems, by the way, that we talked about earlier, like HAPE systems or INE systems that we might be using as part of our data loss prevention, as well as DAM, uh, database systems that can also be inline devices to do access management. But what we're seeing more now is DLP solutions, for example, endpoint protection and host-based DLP. Now, what are we talking about? What type of data are we talking about? Well, we do not want leakage of, you know, health information, of personal information. We don't want leakage of credit card information or people's salaries or their SSNs. And obviously, if you are running an online business and you have a DMZ or a public access zone, you don't want data leaking from those systems as well. So we can use a combination of advanced systems. For example, Cisco has advanced malware protection for endpoints and using their ESA and WSA and CWS, they have data loss prevention. They work with RSA. Palo Alto Networks has some features within it that can do file disposition, that can work with third-party DLP systems. So uh, it's extremely important that we have something in place to protect data. And we're, there's a big focus on that that's going beyond just using uh, you know, inline firewalls and sensors. Now remember, data loss can even occur as a result of legitimate activities. We're not just talking about you know, malware, okay? If we're doing e-discovery during a litigation process or forensics, there could be data leakage and data loss. Um, if you are uh, looking at covering all these different entities like people and processes and systems, uh, there's going to be leakage and there's going to be loss. And what's important, if you remember from the diagram, and really in all the different scenarios with CIS, they always put a lot of emphasis on alerting and reporting and analytics. And so we want to combine some of those advanced analytic tools to be able to analyze endpoint actions, data in use, data in motion or uh, data in rest, okay? Data storage or data in memory, okay? And we can also combine with these endpoint protection systems, we can use deep packet inspection on our next generation firewall and our next generation IPS, and of course, tied into our central centralized management framework. Over the last several years, there's been a shift, a noticeable shift in attention and investment from securing the network to securing the systems within the network and data itself. So DLP controls are critical and they're going to be policy based and they're going to include classification of your sens sensitive data like examples, SSN, credit cards, um, intellectual property, other types of corporate secrets and formulas, all that information. Okay. And we also need to remember that these may be in place for compliance or for regulations as well. Let's take a look at some examples of some systems that can provide this advanced data loss protection. Here we're looking at the Cisco WSA. This is a virtual WSA appliance. And you can just see here that we have a web proxy, which is going to also provide data loss prevention for us. So cloud web services from Cisco, WSA can also participate with RSA DLP. Deep packet inspection is also referred to as granular or fine control. Uh, your WAF, your web application firewall can provide this application inspection and control, advanced visibility and control. What we're talking about here is we're looking really at layer five through seven of the OSI model and not just analyzing traffic based on port numbers, but on the actual behavior of the application and the way that it's using data. We can use content security on a Palo Alto Networks 
and GFW, and of course, layer five through seven policies. So these work hand in hand at layer three through seven, and they also work together with endpoint systems. For example, Palo Alto has their traps agent that can run uh, on their endpoints to participate in data loss prevention. Here we see an adaptive security appliance doing deep packet inspection. This is gonna be you know, port-based uh, DPI. And you can see here, for example, we're actually going in and we're matching uh, the request URI with an inspect map for HTTP. If you'll notice on the left-hand side over there that the adaptive security appliance can build inspect maps, which means layer five through seven inspection for a wide variety of services that are going to move different types of data. Okay, so we're looking at HTTP right now, but you can see H323, ESMTP, DNS, um, Skinny, SIP, SNMP, all very important. So we build these inspect maps to go and match on different criteria, in this example, in request headers and response headers of HTTP. And we have the ability to say, we want to match this and drop it, or we, want, we can say we don't want to match this and drop everything else. This could be you know, SQL injection attacks, for example, in the URI. It could be other types of malicious behavior in the URI. We can go even further and use regular expressions to match and protect from data loss. Here we see inspecting FTP, and one way that we can protect from data loss here is only allowing certain FTP commands, okay? Uh, or, in this case, matching certain commands that we don't want to allow. So we have those capabilities as well. Like for example, we're not gonna allow delete, make directory, or put, okay? That's a great way to protect from data leakage with FTP. Here's ESMTP, so we can use an inspect map for ESMTP on a firewall, or we can use other services. For example, Cisco has the email security appliance which is really a message transfer agent that you can use for your protection. It'll handle and protect all of your inbound and outbound email using ESMTP. And we can use other services as well. For example, we might want to uh, use a cloud protection service to protect all of our email coming to and from our company, but do it through the cloud. Here we see the ASA doing deep packet inspection on instant messaging. Now, instant messaging is another huge area for data loss and data leakage because instant messaging clients used to do just chat, okay? They used to just do IM. But now, through instant messenger, you can covertly tunnel with an HTTP and you can have conferencing services, you can transfer files, uh, you can do voice chat and webcams, and those are all huge vectors for data loss and data leakage. So what we see here in this example is we're gonna go in and we're only gonna allow, let's say, MSN Messenger, and we're only gonna allow the chat service, okay? So we're not allowing conferencing, file transfer, voice chat, or webcam, all key vectors for data loss and data leakage. And here we see, as I mentioned, all of these tools can build regular expressions. And we can use advanced analytics now. For example, we can have syslog and NetFlow sent to advanced tools, and they can parse, and they can correlate the data. They can use regular expressions, and we can actually get some very powerful uh, data analytics services. So not only are we preventing data loss and data leakage, we're actually analyzing our networks, and we're reporting and monitoring and finding results on the types of data, and we're getting visibility into the types of data that are being used in our network because it might not be allowable in the AUP, okay? So we can get visibility as well with these tools. Another powerful feature is S-Flow. S-Flow provides the necessary data to effectively control and manage network usage. Its goal is to detect, diagnose, and fix network problems. It can do real-time congestion management, and it's excellent at understanding various combinations of applications, peer-to-peer -peer file sharing, web apps, DNS, and any changes to the behavior in those applications. So here we can see we've got a layer two or layer three device. We can implement S-Flow by putting an S-Flow agent into the management plane, and that can also output. And those S-Flow datagrams can then be exfiltrated or exported out, and we can build visibility. We can use uh, different portals and different 
graphical interfaces to present the results of S-Flow. S-Flow can also be used for usage accounting, for billing and chargeback, let's say interdepartmental or internal customers, charging back against their budgets, for example. We can use it to, to determine audit trail analysis, to identify unauthorized network activity. We can trace the sources of DOS attacks. We can use it to profile routing and optimization of our routing peers. We can also use it for trending and capacity planning. To get more information on S-Flow, go to www.sflow.org forward slash using underscore S-Flow. This is one of the topics, again, you need to know on the exam, so make sure you research it. Obviously, to understand the flow of traffic, you're going to have to leverage uh, different topologies and diagrams. In lesson 12.8, I'm going to spend quite a bit of time uh, examining my favorite online diagramming tool. It's called LucidChart. So it'll be one of those demonstration uh, lessons, okay? And we'll look at LucidChart, which has a bunch of templates that are excellent for allowing you to map out the application flow, the data flow in your network, and create network diagrams, as you can see where the traffic flows, let's say for in this, this example of a Cisco, classic Cisco diagram, we can see the flow from our endpoints through our access switches, through the aggregate or distribution layer switches, then into the core and from the core to the internet edge or from the core to the data center. And you can follow the traffic flow and also see the participating advanced network flow devices and services, for example, like the Adaptive Security Appliance, or the WSA, or the ESA, or even using Cisco's cloud web services and their SIO service. And now, this is Cisco-centric, but realize that all the major vendors and there's some very powerful partners out there that can help you, your enterprise, get a hold of data loss prevention and data leakage.